Welcome back to Noir Alley. I'm your host, Eddie Muller. I will admit, there have been a few times in my life when things have gone so far off the rails, good and bad, that I don't remember much about the night before. Now, if you're lucky, maybe this will happen once or twice in your lifetime. But in film noir, well, in film noir, it happens with shocking regularity. So often, in fact, writer Lee Server once referred to amnesia as film noir's equivalent of the common cold. In post-war Hollywood, amnesia was an epidemic, especially in crime movies. Somewhere in the Night, The Locket, Shock, Specter of the Rose, Black Angel, Crack Up, So Dark the Night, The Chase, Fear in the Night, Possessed. All these films were made within a year of each other, and they all featured protagonists who had lost or repressed crucial parts of their memory. You know, the part that had to do with killing somebody. Which brings us to today's film, High Wall from 1947 a high watermark in the amnesia epidemic. It stars Robert Taylor, one of the last actors you'd expect to see in a film like this. It's jarring to one's cinematic sensibilities to see the dashing leading man from Camille, Three Comrades, and Waterloo Bridge stewing in paranoid anguish, locked up in an asylum accused of murder. In fact, it's odd to find such a dank and sweaty film emanating from the sparkling sound stages of MGM, where this sort of stuff was routinely disdained by the big boss, Louis B. Mayer. It just goes to show how pervasive the rising tide of noir was at the time, and how eager straight-laced actors like Robert Taylor were to sully their image and test their acting chops in grittier roles. The movie is based on a stage play I haven't read, but I'm going to assume it's set solely in the sanitarium where our hero is being held. MGM hired veteran screenwriter Lester Cole to open up the story, and he obliged by incorporating the noir elements we love so much. Foreboding hallways, eerie elevators, rain-drenched streets, all rendered in high noir style by DP Paul Vogel, an MGM veteran who'd shot many of the studio's Crime Does Not Pay shorts. Well, crime pays off here in plenty of visually striking sequences. Collaborating with Lester Cole on the screenplay and earning his first screen credit was veteran news reporter Sidney Bohm, who'd become Hollywood's preeminent crime writer in the 1950s. His resume stocked with big city crime thrillers such as Side Street, Union Station, and The Big Heat. Now, ironically, Robert Taylor loved this script so much that he requested, as only the biggest stars could, that Lester Cole be assigned to write all his future pictures at MGM. That was before Taylor learned that his favorite writer was a communist. And when the actor, appearing before the House Committee on Un-American Activities, was asked if he knew firsthand of any communists working in Hollywood, Taylor straightaway cited Lester Cole making High Wall the last Hollywood picture to bear the writer's real name. Now, of course, one of the main attractions of this film is its leading lady, Audrey Totter. Earlier this year on Noir Alley, Totter tore it up in the movie Tension, displaying her special gift for tart-tongued vixens. Here, she trades in the slinky swimming suit for a lab coat and some particularly dowdy outfits, aimed, I guess, at suppressing the woman's natural sex appeal. Well, it doesn't quite work. So join me back here in 99 minutes for some background on the director of today's film, the underrated Curtis Bernhardt. For now, let's enjoy what he believed was one of his best Hollywood films. Here's High Wall. 